I thought my last Charge Bolt build would be the best build in the game. It was so powerful, I was clearing everything so easily, and then I tried the new Ice Shard Frost Nova build. This is broken, and it doesn't require any unique items. However, if you have a few of them, it gets even better. This keeps you alive in almost any situation, you can have almost infinite mana, and the ability to shred elites and bosses is like no other. I would recommend that you take some time to look at this video and share it with your sorcerer friends, because, well, honestly, if they're switching to this build from pretty much anything else, they're going to be shocked with the results. Let's get started with the new Ice Shard build. So after getting this staff, this sacred, and this one, I decided I wanted to try a freezing build as well as an ice shard build. And it is absolutely insane, and I think, unfortunately, it is quite a bit better than any of the electrical builds at this moment in time. Let's show you. The idea is, dive into an enemy, burst them down with your frozen, and then, if you're on your cooldown, I've got another awesome ability here where I can go like this. I can heal in the middle of the animation, everything's gonna freeze. And I should be ready to go for the next pack of mobs. I see another one over here. I can just kind of freeze them again. Uh, this hits really, really hard. Now, you still have to play relatively safe. You can't just be an idiot. You'll still die in torment because the enemies are, are so strong. Uh, but I'm feeling pretty good about this build. I'm not ready yet. You can see this boss absolutely getting melted. No problems. Just got to make sure I don't die to all this stuff. <laughs> Help me get a million subs. Thanks. Now, the build does work at a range, and, and it's, it's pretty good at a range. You can attack stuff pretty much off-screen, kill entire packs uh, without having to get near them. One tip I have to be more effective is if you know there's enemies in the distance, just use them at a range, and as they run towards you, uh, I mean, sometimes they teleport right on top of you and group up and die, uh, but as they run towards you, they freeze, and then it chains all of the frost shards everywhere. Now, one of my biggest worries was bosses. My old Charge Bolt build was amazing for clearing situations like this, but when you got to a boss, uh, it wasn't great. I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't great for the bosses unless they summoned a bunch of minions to help chain some of the lightning. This build is nuts against everything. I promise you, uh, this is gonna be amazing. Let me cut to the end where I fight this boss and I'll give you an idea of what it can do. So this build, for me, is, is kind of scuffed, and I'll show you my overall gear and what you would want to get. And I forgot to even make the boss vulnerable for half of the fight, so uh, the damage is still very, very good. Single target, it is great, but it does have good wave clear because of all the other uh, kind of ricocheting and chaining and freezing effects. Now, pay attention to the HP bar when it passes 35%. You're going to notice it just gets absolutely melted. That's because my damage to injured targets is pretty high in this build. So obviously, with your gear, you want to look for damage, defenses, and if you can increase your crowd control durations, everything's frozen longer, and they die. My chest piece is pretty darn good, giving me damage, damage reduction, some max life, as well as total armor, and I've got the extra Frost Nova, uh, allowing me to just kind of spam it into each pack. I use it, I go to the next pack, I use it again, and I use my ultimate, and it kind of resets everything. It's very, very powerful. Now, personally, I have this unique gauntlet, and it's very powerful with freeze duration, crit chance, uh, and even helps with some of your mana. However, it's not necessary, and you could use something like this that's got the Ice Shard ranks. Uh, this is a pretty poorly rolled one compared to what you could get on a glove, so this one's not very good. Uh, but the Avalanche passive is great. You can throw it on gloves, you can throw it on rings, and if I had another copy, I would actually steal this Avalanche perk for this ring right here. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have it, so I'm just going to have to wait. The Ice Heart Braze is another unique that I have, and it's very good because it helps uh, damage the frozen enemies, damage the injured enemies, freeze duration, as well as frozen enemies that are killed uh, can chain some other little Frost Novas. It's not necessary, but it is a big upgrade for this build. As for my boots, I've got some damage mitigation when I'm weak, but I've got plus three ranks to all of my defensive skills. Now, this is going to be giving me more value on my barriers. It's going to reduce my cooldown so I can just spam the freezes, and it is going to give me mobility because I can teleport sooner. You could get just movement speed and things like that on the boots, but for the most part, I'm going fast enough. I just want to go into a pack and kill them, and if I go too fast, I don't have my cooldowns for the next elite pack. So there's no reason to go too fast because then the build kind of falls apart. Anyways, I really like this boot. 
As for the weapon, you can go for a wand and focus, but I just doubled down and I went all in with this ice shards piece. It's got a lot of damage to vulnerable enemies, and for the most part, I want my ice shards to pierce multiple times, and I want to mitigate uh, the damage fall off for all of them. I really like this piece. I know there's multiple ways you could build this, but you're going to want to look for vulnerable damage. You're going to want to look for cold damage, whatever you can. Just pump up those numbers. If the damage per second is really high, as long as it's got a good passive on it, you're probably winning. As for my necklace, I've got damage. I've got plus three ranks to all my defensive skills. So once again, helping with those cooldowns. Uh, it's got movement speed after killing elite. So that's where I'm getting a little bit of my speed. I could change that out for something else, I'm sure. But for right now, that's what we're using. And then plus one rank to permafrost. Now I'm very sad and very salty because permafrost passive is OP. It is actually OP on your build. Uh, I'll show you that in a second, and then imprinted, I've got some damage when I've got a barrier, which is 100% of the time. The reason why permafrost is so overpowered um, is if you look at your skill tree, permafrost gives you 5% more damage to elites for every rank. I could get 10% more on top of this damage to elites just by getting that permafrost up to plus 3. I am praying that I can do that. Defensive skills as well uh, as the permafrost, it is going to be an amazing amulet when I find it. This ring is a lot of damage, and it's kind of a work in progress. The goal long term is to find another avalanche key passive uh, imprint, and I want to take that and put it on the ring because it will give me a ton of value in the build. For right now, it hits really hard, and I don't seem to need any more mana or anything like that. I'm just going to leave it. I'm hitting really hard, and hopefully I get the upgrade soon. Now, Mother's Embrace is definitely good, but my goal long term is to replace it with a good Ancestral Ring, and uh, my hope is to get this passive. Using a cooldown restores 15-25% to 25 mana and max that bad boy out. I'm using all my cooldowns all the time. It'll give me a ton of mana, and I think that overall it should be pretty good. I don't have a lot of mana issues, but I think this one would be nice. I could even go for more damage because, honestly, I'm not sure I'm going to be running out of mana anytime soon. It doesn't seem to be as big of a problem with this build. Also, something to consider is if you're having trouble, some of these potions are extremely powerful for your damage or survivability, and if you're having troubles going into Torment and doing some of these dungeons, this can give 15% crit strike. This gives 30% or 25% crit damage, and so this could be kind of the tipping thing in the scale where you can't beat a dungeon, now you can, so definitely use potions that are valuable. You can get these as drops, uh, some of the better ones, and it's going to carry you. Now, there's another version of this build where you don't even need a normal attack, uh, and you use Flame Shield. <laughs> and so you just got another shield. Helps with your movement speed. It has a chance to heal you and keep you alive. But the idea here is you just walk in. You Nova everything. And with all these different passives, you just have enough mana. And you never have to worry about it. So the idea here is I can just kind of walk in and freeze everything like this. Right? Uh, we got a bunch of enemies here. That's no problem. I can keep myself alive. I've got my barriers. And I can, for the most part, just cast skills. Uh, it shouldn't be too big an issue. They get close again, no problem. I'm running out of cooldowns, oh no. I use my ultimate, and now all of a sudden, uh, I'm gonna have a lot of my cooldowns again, and I can just kind of keep that process going. Now, I'm missing one of the key pieces to keep my mana up. I literally don't even have any generation on this piece, and so as soon as I do, uh, it's gonna be a lot stronger. Um, you can essentially have infinite mana using this type of ring, uh, Using a cooldown restores your mana. I can show you what that looks like right now just to give you an idea. But if I spend all my mana, right, I can teleport in mana. Use that mana, right? And I'm casting. And then as you're attacking enemies, you'll generate more mana. So it's OP. So as for the skill tree, you're going to want to take Firebolt because you're going to use it as one of your enchantments. However, I have an extra point in here to help generate some mana against burning enemies. Once I upgrade my rings, I won't take this. And so what you would normally do is you would essentially just do this, plus two there. You can get rid of that one. And now I've got one more point to throw into the build somewhere. I can boost up uh, and get some um, damage reduction when I'm fighting enemies. I could get a cooldown on some of these things. So that is my goal long term. I think that I, I can probably get there very soon and not need that extra mana. But there's a few times where I'm running around and I feel like I can't do anything. And so that's why I picked it initially. Now, Ice Shards is interesting because you can choose this one and when you have a barrier active... Enemies will pretend that they're frozen, and you will ricochet off of them using this passive, and it's very, very powerful. 
But if you use this one, you need to make them vulnerable, you get more value down lower in the tree. So I'm going with the vulnerable. Uh, I think it's great because my weapon has vulnerable damage and things like that. But there are multiple ways you could do this. You're going to want three points in this because you're actually going to be max mana for a lot of the time and you get a ton of benefit from this compared to some of the other sorcerer builds. As you can see, my defensive skills are kind of yoked. They're very powerful because of all the bonuses I'm getting from my gear. Uh, but what you're going to want to do is Shimmering Teleport to help with some damage mitigation. Uh, you're going to get your Frost Armor juiced up and then get the mana generation from this. And then you're going to push all the way down to make Frost Nova doing vulnerable. Uh, very valuable overall. Would recommend you do this as a priority. Personally went with some lucky hit chance. However, um, Align the Elements as well as this protection is very good for keeping you alive. Uh, the mana shield is also pretty good, and realistically, if you're having trouble surviving, that's my big issue. I don't need to kill anymore. I need to stay alive. And so I'm actually considering uh, swapping over and getting this just to give me a little bit more survivability. Snap Freeze is very good because you have a chance to freeze all the different enemies, and then Icy Veil, obviously, to increase your barrier duration. But another one is because we have the enchantment to make everything burning, Devouring Blaze just gives you a ton of extra damage. So Frigid Breeze has a chance to give you mana back when attacking vulnerable enemies, which you're going to make everyone vulnerable, so this is very good for keeping your mana up. Uh, this is extra damage to vulnerable vulnerable enemies, which they're all going to be vulnerable, hopefully all the time. Uh, and then you've got this chilled and frozen damage. You've got this bad boy, uh, damage to elites, but deep freeze OP. It keeps you alive in the middle of a pack. It freezes everything around you so you can dish out some damage for free, but it also can help reset the cooldowns uh, of your other abilities. So this is a very powerful tool overall. I uh, would highly recommend that. Uh, and then we've got this bad boy, Avalanche. Frost skills have a chance um, to do more damage against vulnerable enemies. It gives you free casts. Very powerful overall. Now, the Paragon board is a little bit tough because depending on when you get certain glyphs to drop, you might not have leveled them. Maybe you did. Um, I have a few recommendations. Tactician, pretty good as long as you can get it to proc. I can't even get it to proc yet. I need to level it up further uh, so that the radius increases. But this one is very good because you're using multiple defensive skills and you essentially have constant uh, bonus damage to all enemies. That is a pretty valuable one. The, um, the destruction one is also very good. Critical strikes increase your damage to everything. Uh, there's this one here called Exploit, uh, which deals bonus damage to vulnerable enemies. There's so many options for these glyphs. Uh, just choose one that gives you more damage and you win. But for the actual board, um, to get you started, Frigid Fate is very good. Uh, all your enemies are going to be vulnerable, so this is giving you extra lucky hit chance. Definitely solid. However, another great option, and maybe even better, killing a frozen enemy gives you a barrier. Uh, good for keeping you alive. It's going to depend how you're feeling about it. There's so many different options on these boards. Um, if you go with this one first, you can get some extra cold damage. If you go with this one first, uh, you can get some resistances. Uh, you can get some uh, vulnerable damage. So it's, it's really up to you. I don't know what's going to be mathematically optimal because you've got 250 uh, different choices to make with this Paragon board. But uh, I, I think that no matter what, you're going to melt everything in the game. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you're interested in a bunch of other Sorcerer content coming soon, consider subscribing to the channel. I would appreciate it very much. I'm going to be working on a Fireball build very soon because i got a couple new uniques and I want to test out if it's any good. But for right now, this build is amazing. I also did one up in the top right corner there. Uh, if you're interested in doing a Charge Bolt build and do some electricity stuff, it is a very strong build overall, but I do think that this one is the best in the game right now until I test some of the fire stuff. Thanks again. See you soon. Bye-bye.